K40 Whisperer can be used with G code. Um, what you're going to have to do is open up K40 Whisperer and just go open design. You can also click the open design file here. And then under the files of type selection in the dialog box, you need to drop down and select G code files or all files. And that'll bring up It'll, it'll then display the, the typical extensions for G-code files. And in actuality, you don't need to um, have one of these extensions. What, what K40 Whisperer does is it looks for a DXF extension and an SVG extension. If it doesn't find either of those two extensions, it's going to assume it's G-code. So if you have some oddball G-code extension that your um, software is generating, there really isn't any need to change it. Um, at this point because it's just going to default to reading it as G-code because the extensions for SVG and, and DXF are still standardized. So from there you just open up a choose one of the files and this is a file that I wrote by hand and it's going to be displayed in white just to distinguish it from other things. The As you see down here in the lower left corner the options for the different feed rates uh, go away and you end up with one button for run G code. In the advanced settings, you do have the, the number of passes is there still. So you could actually run multiple passes on a single G code file um, if, the, if the multiple passes isn't embedded in your file. And basically from here, to run this G code, we just hit run G code. Um, but I want to talk about a couple other things. Um, what, what's, what happens by default when you bring in G code? The, the origin or the zero zero point is in the upper left corner of any design in K40 Whisperer. If you want to change that, you need to go, and if you want to change that so you use the, the coordinate system that actually is associated with the G code file, you need to go in and change use input coordinate system. You need to check that box. And now the coordinate system of the that that is in the G code file is the new zero zero position. When you do that, I mentioned in a previous video, it, K40 Whisper no longer restricts you from where you're moving. So the the design could actually go outside of the uh, laserable area. So you just have to be careful about that if you select that that setting. Now the origin of this imported G code is at the zero zero position that's in the G code file. So now we, we have this G-code file opened up. Let's see what's inside that G-code file. So this is the G-code file I wrote by hand. Um, and I'll just step through just to give you an idea of what's, what's in this file and what, what it expects. Uh, the, the first thing we're gonna wanna set absolute distance mode, which is a G90. Uh, set the active plane to XY. That's something that I don't think is generally done on laser cutters. It, it, whether you have that or not, it's, it's not important. It's something I put in there because that's uh, typically what is needed on a on a CNC machine if you're if you're going to do arcs and things like that. Um, if you, you, we need to set the units to either inches or millimeters, K40 Whisper is going to honor the 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 units. So if it's so, see here, I, I imported a file into K40 Whisper with inches. My settings in K40 Whisperer are millimeters. It'll just interpret that and get the correct size. The next thing that we set here is the spindle speed. And basically, for K40 Whisperer, when you're importing G code, this, any spindle speed that is greater than zero is going to be laser on, any, and a spindle speed of zero is laser off. So basically, this is turning the laser on. And then spindle speed is a, is a modal parameter in G code. So once it's on, it's on for everything. The only time that you're not gonna, that the laser is not gonna be on, um, if the spindle is on, when you're, if if it's been set at the beginning of the file, is during rapid moves. So this first move is a um, a G zero, which is a rapid move to zero zero position. And because we have the, um, because of the way we're set up right now in in K40 Whisperer, the zero position, the, the origin is, or where the laser is, is the zero, zero position. So that's gonna end up being no move. If we would have left the coordinate system, the default in K40 Whisperer, that first move would bring us to the center. 
So we'll leave that back the way it was. So that'll, that'll essentially be a no move um, when we run the G code in this configuration. So then from there, the the first command, the move for the cutting command is a G1 and it's X in the one to the one position and then it sets the feed at 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to each one of these little petals on this little flower looking thing is going to be a different speed. So it's going to be it's going to go to one at a feed rate of 15 and feed is also modal. So it's going to maintain that feed rate until you change it. So it's going to do a feed go to x1 then it's going to go to a, a y1 so x1 y1 and then it goes to x0 y0 so it's basically the first pedal is complete at 15 inches per minute and then the next pedal at 30 the third pedal at 60 and the fourth pedal at 120 and then at the end we have a spindle stop which actually has no effect um, in k40 whisper at this point it, it may at some point but it, it it's not it's not uh, doing any command based on that when the when the program ends the laser is going to be turned off by k40 whisper it's not going to allow you to um, leave the laser on after after the after the uh, G code is run so basically the and the m2 is also an optional thing in k40 whisper but I, I leave these in here for completeness um, uh, it, it's just good good practice to have them in there even if the software you're using isn't uh, isn't reading them okay so now we can go back and start up our laser cutter I'm gonna initialize the laser cutter and then I'm gonna actually go to a predefined position and actually I need to go down over here all right so basically, I have my laser cutter positioned, the G-code is loaded, all that's left to do is set the power on the laser cutter, which I've done, and run the G-code. There's nothing too terribly exciting about that other than you can see that the first cuts are darker and as you go around the pinwheel it gets lighter and lighter because the feed rate was faster. So now if we want to move on to a different file, um, just open another file. Again we have to switch so we see the g-code and I have a g-code file that I created with LaserWeb 4 and go back to my predefined position. And I'm gonna see my I'm outside of my cutable area there, so I'm gonna flip the use the predefined coordinate system or the default coordinate system in K40 Whisperer. And we can we can run this and then I'll after I'm run after I've run this I'll show what uh, how I created this file in LaserWeb 4. And I'm by no means an expert, so you have to take that with a grain of salt but the um, it does show that you can use g-code generated in external programs with k40 whisperer and I had that set just about right so it cut it out vector engraved and did the raster engraving all at the same power level with different feed rates. So this is how I created the G-code file for the demonstration. Open up LaserWeb 4, add a document. I have a SVG file set up um, with my logo. So I'm gonna click on doc to show the whole document here. And I expand this out to see the individual pieces of the SVG file. So I have a couple of rectangles and an image in the middle. 
So let's look at the external rectangle first. So I'm going to take that, drag it down to add G-code. And what I want to do is make that a cut. And I can see if I can get it so I can see the rest of this here. So, okay, so now as I go down here, I see that LaserWeb 4 is telling me what I need, where I need to add data. And I'm going to put this at uh, 8 millimeters per second. And basically, that should be it. So I had, what I didn't say earlier is I have it set up as uh, a generic GRB, GBRL uh, settings. And for vector, that should be all I need to do. So I'm going to go back up here, hide that. I'll generate the G code for that one motion. And I'm going to hide the SVG file. So now you see the G code is there. And I'm going to do the same thing. Let's get back here. Get rid of the G code that I generated. Um, so I have the outside rectangle done. I'm going to do the inside rectangle. I'm going to do this at a, going to drag that down. I'm going to do that at a slower speed. Get the height zero. Yeah, or I'm going to do that at a faster speed, so I'm um, just engraving it, I guess. So I'm going to use the same power and just do an engraving on the blue, and the red will be cut out in the end here. And maybe get it fast because I'm going to have it the the amps the the current turned up pretty high. So it gives me this error, but I think I could probably change that in the settings to tell me where. Um, what the min could be for the machine, but I think it, it'll still generate the G code from my experience. So we'll go, okay, uh, hide this, generate the G code again, just to make sure it's working. Cause I'm not, I'm not very good at this. So I'm just, I like to make sure everything's working the way I expect it to. Okay. So I have G code for both of those features. Come back up here, grab my image, Grab the image down. So now this is, it gets a little more complicated for an image. Um, so I have the same things here. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an engraving speed of 50, which is actually pretty slow. I was having a little trouble with getting, when I get the engraving speed too fast, it, it has trouble when I'm using G-code. And then we'll go down and because I can't control the, or the K40 stock controller can't control the power, I'm gonna put dithering down here and that's gonna make it so, um, it just does, uh, it'll, it'll be either on or off. And we go back up here Well, let's see, let's generate the G-code and see what happens. Okay, that looks pretty good. So it's it's trimming it so it's not it's not running the whole width. I, one of these settings in here changes that, but that looks okay. I think I have everything set up. I'm just gonna go ahead and save my G-code. Let me say save. Just as a reminder, this is the object that was created with the g-code that we just made using laser web 4 that was created earlier in this video